Thank you so much for joining us today. This is a, another professional learn. This is another piece of our professional learning series for the month of March. I have with me today um, some program academic uh, consultants that are with us today, and we're going to be t really focused on the reading and writing standards. And they have some really exciting um, things to share with us. And I'll let them introduce themselves in just a moment. But I'm Jackie Rogers. I'm a professional learning coordinator, and we're very excited to share with you a specific resource today. If you're interested in other um, resources or in other content areas, remember you can always go to kystandards.org where you can find any of our webcast archive, but you can also find any of the res resources they mention or for other content areas there on that website. If you subscribe, anytime there's something new, it will be, uh, it'll come out in our newsletter once a week and you'll be able to stay up to date with all the new um, pieces. So today, we are talking about creating text-dependent questions to support implementation of the CAS for reading and writing. And really our focus for this entire um, year is about building systems and structures to support the implementation of the standards. So this month we are really focused on reading and writing. We've also had a month dedicated to science and social studies. And then we will also have one for math next month. And then in May we'll round out the year with an overview of um, what's coming up for the summer. So we're particularly excited for that. I'm going to let, I'm going to turn this over to our consultants today, and we are uh, we appreciate everyone being with us. All right, so as Jackie mentioned, I um, want to introduce ourselves. I am Kelly Philbeck, and I'm one of the academic program consultants. I'm Pam Winnegar, and I'm a literacy consultant. And I'm Whitney Hamilton, also a literacy consultant here. And so as Jackie mentioned, um, we do have that three-year implementation plan for CAS um, that first year where we are right now. Um, we're going to be in systems and structures to support standards implementation. And so you're going to see this year, you know, lots of development. And so lots of resources that we'll be sharing to help you with the implementation of standards in your schools and districts. We do want to remind you about our professional learning series, and so we have webcasts the first and third Thursday of each month. We have digital professional learning opportunities that will be released on the fourth Thursday. And then finally, we have a topic study um, that is self-paced that uh, you can join. It's going on right now, um, and it's building a culture of learning, which is a, and has a focus on PLCs. And so, as Jackie mentioned, um, the content area focus for this month of March is reading and writing. And so, we're very excited to share some of our resources with you today. And so, along with today, um, we're also, like I mentioned before, you know, with every content area on the fourth Thursday, there's a digital professional learning release. And so, on this fourth Thursday, um, for us, we will be sharing with you, um, today we're going to be talking about text-dependent questions. And so, on the 26th, we're going to release a digital professional learning opportunity that focuses on um, writing text-dependent tasks. And so we're going to take those small pieces of just writing questions to a much larger piece to how do you design an entire writing task uh, based on a text set. So we're going to turn it over to Pam now and she's going to be talking with you and introducing us um, to our topic for today. Thanks Kelly. As mentioned, um, we are in year one of our implementation plan of the Kentucky Academic Standards, which means we are in the process of sharing resources with you that are available on kystandards.org to support implementation and alignment of the new reading and writing standards. This webcast is going to focus on our Understand Text Dependent Questions module available on kystandards.org. Everything we are going to highlight today about text-dependent questions is explained in more detail in the TDQ module. So we urge you to take a deeper dive into the text-dependent questions using the module. In this session, you will learn the process for creating text-dependent questions that are aligned to the Kentucky Academic Standards for Reading and Writing. You will also identify text-dependent questions versus non-text-dependent questions. You will understand how text-dependent questions focus students' efforts on the most important parts of a complex text. And you will also understand how text-dependent questions guide students through the process of creating meaning of a text. What is a text-dependent question? A TDQ is a question that is 
only answerable by referring to the text that is being read. Now that we know what text-dependent questions are, let's take a look at how TDQs can be used in every lesson to improve student learning. As you can see in the graphic, we always want to begin with a complex text and, of course, the Kentucky Academic Standards for Reading and Writing. While this graphic doesn't include the CASTs, um, it is important to apply knowledge of the standards from the beginning and throughout the development of TDQs. Using TDQs helps students analyze, synthesize, evaluate in order to build deeper meaning from the text. Why should we use TDQs? TDQs help students understand complex text. They deepen students' understanding of a text by sequencing questions to build on each other, and they direct students to intentionally read certain parts of the text to gain required knowledge. So when we think about the characteristics of the text-dependent questions, um, we want to think about some of the things that they do and some of the things that they do not do. And so um, with text-dependent questions, they definitely they ground students in their responses in complex text. And that's one of the most important things that we can do with literacy instruction is make sure students are reading, comprehending, closely reading, and consistently delving back into that complex text. However, text-dependent questions do not assume that students have background knowledge. And so there's a huge equity piece there. We want to make sure that all students have equal access to the text. And so when you're asking questions, and we'll look at some examples today, but when you're asking questions that really require a lot of background knowledge, all students aren't starting at that same point. And so we want to make sure that all students are able to access that text and they're all starting at that same entry point. So when we think about crafting and designing text-dependent questions, there's a few things we need to remember. Um, first of all, text-dependent questions are not low-level or recall, they're just literal questions. They're not just those right there, easy to find questions. We wanna make sure we're making students think about the text and how it all pulls together. They're also not questions that students can answer without having read the text. And so the key component of text dependency is you have to have that text there um, to be able to answer that question. And so having that text there goes to our next two bullets. We want to make sure that we're not accessing, like we mentioned before, that prior knowledge or that personal background. Um, so students shouldn't ha have to have that context to be able to answer those particular questions. They should just be able to go to the text and find those answers or make <coughs> inferences based upon what they've read from that text. And then we also want to be really careful about questions that require speculation. So we don't want hypotheticals, not you know, what if questions. We want to make sure that it's, everything we're asking students is truly grounded in the text. And so when we're going to look at an example, a few questions from the Gettysburg Address. And so that's a familiar text, familiar speech um, that we're all aware of. And so when you think about a text-dependent question from the Gettysburg Address, um, if we wanted to go to the level really looking at vocabulary and how key terms and phrases are used, you can see on the screen we've got the question, um, what is the importance of meeting on the portion of the field and this ground? And so by using those quoted phrases from the text, students are required to go back into that text and see what is the meaning of that phrase? How does it fit within the context around it and um, within that particular speech? And how does that impact maybe the meaning and the tone of those phrases? However, a non-text dependent question is going to privilege that background information. So we want to avoid those. And so that's one of the ones I mentioned before. So if we ask students, why did the North fight the Civil War? that creates an equity issue for students and it privileges background knowledge and so we want to be really careful to make sure that we don't ask those types of questions because those will definitely put students at a disadvantage if they don't have that prior knowledge or if they don't have that context to rely upon. And so in writing text-dependent questions, if you go to a deeper level, you really want to think about three categories for text-dependent questions. And we first of all have questions that assess vocabulary and comprehension. So that's something to consider when you're writing text-dependent questions. Questions that assess syntax and structure. 
and questions assessing themes and central ideas. So those are the three main categories that we look at in this module. And um, when you think about writing questions from those categories, you're really thinking about building meaning of the text. And so having students closely read and delve back into that text. So you're scaffolding and structuring those questions to where you're building a sequence um, that will truly help students have a deeper meaning of the text that will really help them navigate through some of those maybe tougher spots of the text where they can absolutely access that information and understand it better. I'm going to turn it over to Whitney now and she's going to give us some more examples of text dependent questions and whether they are text dependent or are not text dependent and why. Okay, so let's use what we've learned from Kelly and Pam so far in the webcast to, to look at these questions, examples, and see if they're text dependent or not. And we're still working from the text, the Gettysburg Address. So who are our fathers? What can we know about our fathers from this sentence? Think about what we've learned so far. This is a text dependent question. And the reason that it is, is because it's a vocabulary TDQ that doesn't necessarily make it a TDQ, but because it requires students to look at a familiar word, fathers in this case, in conjunction with the rest of the text and in a way that has a different meaning than how students traditionally use the word, it is a text dependent question. It takes students right back to the text and they have to do the thinking around that phrase to make sense of it, so it is a TDQ. Let's look at another. Why does Lincoln start this section with the word but? This is a TDQ also. This text-dependent question assesses structure because it requires readers to look back at the relationship between the two thoughts Lincoln is proposing. And we have another. What is a metaphor? Make up a metaphor that Lincoln could use in the Gettysburg Address. Okay, ask yourself, is this text dependent or not? This is not a text dependent question. And if we think about what we've learned so far, we can recognize that it's not because this question does not require the reader to return to a specific portion of the text, to gain specific knowledge, and does not guide the reader to build a deep understanding of the text meaning. Now, it's possible that a non-TDQ could be revised to have the characteristics of a text-dependent question some of the time. So we just looked at a question that is not text-dependent. Um, that was the one with what is a metaphor, make up a metaphor that Lincoln could use in the Gettysburg Address. We've revised that one to show you how it could be a text-dependent question. Here it is. How does using the metaphor, new birth of freedom, impact the meaning or tone of the passage? Those changes make it a TDQ because in this version, students have to answer um, the question by referring back to the text. The question is actually grounded in the text and the answer can only be found by referring to the text. And that is going to wrap us up and Kelly's going to give us some takeaways. So some of the things that we have discussed today in our session, and again, you can find these in the module, um, some of our key takeaways about text-dependent questions, we need to remember that they do level the playing field for all students and help students make meaning. They require students to closely examine complex text, and they facilitate close reading in order to build a deeper understanding of text. They also continuously guide readers back to the text and looking very deeply at specific portions of the text for specific answers. And so text dependent questions are very intentional. They are definitely very standard, make sure they're very aligned to your standards. Um, and they really guide students through difficult, complex text. And so they're an incredible tool that you can use with your students in your classrooms. 
So to continue supporting you with text-dependent questions, we want to provide you with our text-dependent questions module. And this text-dependent questions module will kind of lead you through everything that we've talked about today, plus additional information. Um, it is very self-paced, and so you can access it whenever you need to. You can do whatever portions you need to. You can come back and review um, any portions that you would like, and that is there for you on kystandards.org. And so when you go to kystandards.org, um, you'll see that we've got that red circle on the screen. Um, and you want to go to the portion of the website that has your standards resources. Once you go to your standards resources, um, go straight to that reading and writing, that red icon that we've talked with you about in the past. And so all of the reading and writing resources will be under that red button. So definitely click on that to get straight to this particular module. And you can see down on the left side, I'm on the second row, that there are our professional learning modules for reading and writing. And so this, along with many others um, that are already there and many to come, uh, will be there for you that you can access. So definitely, if you're looking for that text-dependent questions module, you want to go there and you'll get all the information that you need to know and that we've shared with you today. We also want to share with you um, our March 26 Digital Professional Learning Opportunity. And on that date, this will just be a release of this module. So there won't be a webcast that day, but um, on the 26th in our standards newsletter, um, you will get a link to where you can access this particular module. And it will also be posted um, on that same link that I mentioned before there with the professional learning modules on kystandards.org. And like I mentioned at the beginning, we've talked today about text-dependent questions, which are the smaller pieces. This digital professional learning experience is going to delve into actually creating writing tasks that you can frame um, around a text set to help students access multiple text. And text-dependent questions can be a part of that overall writing task in your daily instruction. So I'm going to turn it back over to Jackie for five things to know before you go. Thank you. Really appreciate your all's information. Uh, we always want to remind you before we go that we do have a subscription that you can uh, subscribe to at kystandards.org. Again, if you do that, you put in your uh, email address, then once a week you'll get our newsletter that will have all of the updated resources. For instance, the upcoming professional um, learning series or the release on March 26th of Creating Standards Aligned Text Dependent Writing Task. We also have new modules that are coming soon, Plan a Close Reading Lesson and Quantitative and Qualitative Analysis, so those will be available soon. We also want to let you know about a reading and writing opportunity for the summer. This is going to be a standards workshop and it will be in June. We'll have a lot more information about that coming out very soon. There's an application process for that and we do know that it will be in the second or third week of June so um, kind of be planning for that if you're uh, an ELA teacher and you're looking for a really deep dive into reading and writing standards this is for you. There's also a stipend involved in that so that's always nice as well. Our next webcast the CAS for Mathematics alignment resources will be on April 9th so you can join us live then. Thank you so much for joining us and as always you can find us on kystandards.org.